Okay, everyone, we're picking up where we left off. We brought the image into the Elements Editor from the um, Adobe Camera Raw converter. And um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you didn't watch part one of this. So I suggest you do so because that's all about how to edit raw images. And this started its life as a raw image that I shot in raw with my camera. So, okay, so we're just going to do some tweaking in the Elements Editor. We've already brought this image very far from where it originally started. So let's get right to it. The first thing we want to do is make a selection of the sky. So we're going to go to our old friend, the Quick Selection tool. And we're going to make sure that we're creating a new selection. And I'm going to make my brush bigger by hitting the right bracket key. Or I could come down to the options panel and change the size of my brush there. But I like using the right bracket key to make it larger and the left bracket key to make it smaller. So about that size is good. I'm going to start in the upper left hand corner and just slowly drag across and at some point, actually right there, the quick selection tool finishes my selection for me. So I've got this guy selected except for one area that I'm not liking right here. So I'm going to add to the selection making my brush smaller to do so. And um, it's already defaulted to add the selection. The quick selection tool actually changed itself to add the selection because once you make a new selection, you're either going to be adding or subtracting from it. So um, the default is to add. And it did that. Now this isn't perfect. Like right there, it got a little too much, but that's okay. I just wanted to grab some of the scaffolding um, and make that a part of the selection too. All right, so let's zoom out. And the way I'm zooming out is by holding down the command key and then hitting minus. That would be control minus on the PC. Okay, now I have this active selection. I'm gonna come up here to this blue and white circle, which is a second icon in above the top, on the top of the layers panel, if you're in elements 10 or below, that same area would be down below the layers and the bottom of the layers panel, but it's the same, well, it would be a black and white circle in 10 and below. Anyway, I'm going to click on that circle and then select hue saturation. And not only do we get the hue saturation adjustment layer right here, and it's, you know, adjustments available to us in the adjustment panel, but we also get this layer mask, which automatically transferred that active selection into a layer mask. So we had the sky selected, so it's white and everything else is black. White reveals, black conceals. If I hold down the Alt key and click on the layer mask, I can see the mask in the main editing window. And there we go. White conceals, black, I'm sorry, white reveals, black conceals. Okay, hitting the Alt key, holding down the Alt key again, clicking on the layer mask, we're back to the image. Well, we haven't done anything yet, so there's really nothing to reveal, but if I were to take my hue slider, you can see that I'm only changing the sky. And what I want to do is make it, move it a little bit more toward orange, something more like that. That's a more realistic um, sunset. Okay, I like that, looking good. That's it. We're done with that. So I'm going to double click on the layer name and call the sky. So I know that when I make more layers that I can at a glance know what layers do and what. All right. The next thing we want to do, I don't like the, um, the trees here. They're not green enough. They're too yellowish because back in the raw editor, you may recall, we changed the uh, white balance of the entire photograph. So I'm going to make these trees greener. So I could do it with this adjustment layer, but it's really going to be too complicated. So it's easier in this case just to make yet another hue saturation um, adjustment layer, like so. Okay, so now um, I'm going to change my hue slider, and I'm really just doing this for the trees, even though I'm clearly affecting the entire image. Um, I'm just really concerned about the trees, so I like that. So now what I have to do is block everything else. So what I'll do is grab a brush, just a plain old brush from the toolbox, making sure my foreground color is black. I'll make my brush 
pretty big and start at the top and I'm painting with black which is concealing that effect where I don't want it which is in the sky so once I've got you know um, the broad strokes as it were I'll zoom in start on the left side of the photograph left bracket key to make my brush a lot smaller and sort of come in tighter on the tops of the trees. So we're blocking that greenish tint by painting with black on the layer mask. All right, so let me undo that. What I just did there, because I wasn't looking at my keyboard, I thought I was hitting my space bar and I was hitting my command key, and then I went to move the image around with what I thought was my hand tool like this. But since I wasn't looking at the keyboard, I hit the command key by mistake, that gave me access to my move tool and I actually moved that layer mask. See that? So, word to the wise, be careful. You know, like you can, I can't tell you how many times I've done that because I wasn't really paying attention. This is what I wanted to do. I'm hitting the space bar and that gives me temporary access to my hand tool so I can move my image around. I'm not moving any elements in the image, I'm moving the entire document because I'm zoomed in pretty far. All right, so I'm going to continue on. And listen, clearly I'm not being really super accurate here, but I don't need to be. And some images you do have to be. If, if it was a different kind of image, I would probably have to make a really complicated selection of these treetops. Thankfully, I don't have to do that here. Okay, so grabbing my hand tool again. Let me go back, double check everything. That looks pretty good. I like that. So I'm going to zoom out by going Command minus. That would be Control minus on the PC. And there we go. So now I got the green foliage back. I got my nice kind of magenta-ish, orange-ish, reddish sky, which is cool. So we could stop here. But one thing um, that I think would make this even look more realistic the shaded side, shade is slightly cooler than direct sunlight, okay? It has a different color temperature. And since we basically warmed up the entire photograph, I think that the shaded side of these buildings, i.e. the front of them, are too warmish, even though they're darker. So we can fix that. I'm going to show you two ways to do it. Um, here's the easy way. Click on the same Create a, a new filler adjustment layer icon, click on it, and this time choose photo filter. That creates a new layer with a photo filter, but instead of the warming filter, choose cooling filter 80. Now, if we change the density of the filter, you can see how it affects, it cools down the whole image, just making it look a lot more like, you know, nighttime. But we just want to have it do its thing, as it were, on the, uh, fronts of the buildings, these areas. Okay, so um, the way we're going to do that, and the quickest way is to go down to the sky layer, hold down the command key on the Mac, the control key on the PC, and click on the mask of the sky layer. That calls that mask up as a selection. We've still got the photo filter layer that we just created active, so now all we need to do is go up to edit, fill selection, and we want to use the color black and hit OK. That blocks the, the photo filter from acting on the sky. So now I'm going to deselect, grab a brush, make sure my foreground color is black, and now I can paint in the warmth on the right side of the buildings, which would be getting hit by that setting sun. And again, thankfully, I don't have to be really accurate. So let me come in uh, tight onto this area. Make my brush a little smaller by hitting my left bracket key and just warm up that side of this building. Space bar to get my hand tool. And sort of fine tune this thing. I'll grab the roof here, a little bit there, this roof here, that part of the roof there. And I'm not really being that accurate, but that's okay because, you know, you don't have to be in this case. Grab this side of the building and make my brush a little smaller to get this little wedge here. Okay, that's actually looking pretty good. So there we go. 
Um, all right, now I, I spilled over a little bit, so I'm gonna make my foreground color white by hitting my X key, and I'm gonna paint away. I'm gonna basically revealing that cooling filter on the front side of this building. All right, so let's zoom out, Command and Control minus, spacebar to reposition the image. Okay, that looks pretty good, right? It's very subtle, but now <clears throat> the fronts of the buildings are slightly cooler. That looks realistic to me. I'm gonna show you another way. This is a little more complicated. Um, so basically, before I do that, let me hold down the Alt key on the photo filter layer so you can see the mask. I mean, the mask is clearly a mess, right? But it still works, so we're good with it. Well, I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer, like clicking that uh, Add New Adjustment Layer icon, and this time I'm gonna choose Solid Color. <clears throat> And I'm going to choose blue. And I'm going to hit OK. All right. Well, this is a big mess. Now, this is something what we haven't looked at yet. I'm going to, I'm going to go to this drop-down menu that right now says Normal, click on it, and then I'm going to choose Overlay. And what that does is allow this blue color to be overlaid on top of the image. Actually, that looks pretty cool. That's not what we want, but it does look pretty cool. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could take this layer mask, this layer mask, and apply it to this layer? I'm going to turn it off and on. Well, unfortunately, in Elements, you can't do that. So I'm going to show you a little trick to sort of fake that. Okay, but you know what? I forgot one thing. Let's go back to the photo filter layer because the photo filter is also impacting on these um, trees and I don't like that. So I'm going to make my foreground color black down here. I hit the X key to do that or I could have hit this right angle arrow and I'm going to make my brush bigger and I'm going to paint with black to bring back some of the um, warmth in these trees. All right, this is subtle, I know, but forgot to do it before. All right, so, <clears throat> so here's our layer mask, once again, for this layer. It looks like that. What I want to do, let me turn on this layer. What I want to do is get that layer mask up into this new color fill layer. But there's no direct way to do that in Elements. So we're going to sort of do a little trick. So what I'm going to do is hold down the Command key on the Mac, Control key on the PC, and click on that layer mask for the photo filter. That brings up that mask as a selection. But right now, it's the opposite of what I want. Because you see, what's now selected is white. And if I come back up here to the color fill layer, the whole mask is white. <clears throat> so what we do is go to select, inverse. That inverted the selection. And then edit, fill selection with what? With black. Hit OK. Well, guess what? We just added that layer mask to this new adjustment layer. So I'm going to deselect. Now that's a real mess. But all I need to do at this point is change the opacity, bring it way down to about 15%-ish, and there we go. Same very subtle effect. Here's before, after. And that took not much time at all. So two different ways to achieve the same result with the added benefit of being able to relatively easily um, move the layer mask from one layer to another. If you didn't catch that, go back and watch it again because there was no direct way to do it. Um, there is in Photoshop, but not in Elements. But all you really need to do is turn that layer mask back into a selection, usually invert it, and then add, fill it with black on the new layer mask, and boom, you've got the same exact layer mask that you had on the layer you're taking it from. All right, that's really it for this image. Um, we're done. So um, I hope this was helpful for you all, and we learned a couple new neat little tricks. And there it is. So let me hit my Tab key to tab away my um, panels, and we can see the image. All right, coming back. All right, guys. See you next time.